All right, what's up everyone? This is Daniel Orion and you're watching Arachn Orion. Now this is a video I've been wanting to make for some time now. My aim is to help settle a debate that pops up from time to time on the internet, and it's about how deadly spiders are, especially in comparison to other animals, or really anything else that can hurt or kill you. See, spiders are my favorite animals, but they also happen to be one of the most feared animals in the world. It's very important, I think, to be able to put things into correct perspectives by examining just how dangerous one animal is when compared to another. So before we get into that, I think we need to answer two different questions in order to gain the correct perspective on how dangerous spiders are. First, we want to know which spiders are statistically actually dangerous. And second, we want to know how those spiders rank among the world's most dangerous animals. So we actually answered the first question in a previous video on this channel. And we determined that there were four truly dangerous spiders out there in the world. The widow spiders, the Australian funnel web spiders, the South American armed spiders, or wandering spiders, and the violin spiders, or recluse spiders. These four are the spiders with confirmed kills on human beings, and they are the world's most dangerous spiders. If you're interested in hearing more about this topic, you can check out my video on the four most dangerous spiders. I will leave the link in the description. Now, what about the second question? That's what we're going to be exploring today. How do these spiders rank among the world's most dangerous animals? So if you type um, animals that kill the most people per year on the internet, you can find a lot of lists similar to these, where it'll rank the most dangerous animals in the world by how many people each of these animals kill. For example, this one comes from the BBC Science Focus magazine, and it was from 2023. Now, the top of the list, or I guess in this case the bottom, <laughs> is um, humans and mosquitoes, and those will always be the same. Those two are the animals that kill by far the most humans per year. But even past those, we start to see some usual suspects. Snakes always rank very highly on these lists. Dogs rank pretty highly on these lists. They kill a lot through rabies. Um, assassin bugs are usually pretty high. Scorpions, decently high. And then crocodiles are usually fluctuating right around that 1,000 mark. After that, you see a drop-off um, taking in steps between um, the number just falling lower and lower for each of the next following animals. And just to illustrate how the statistics do stay pretty even, here is a source from Elfline in 2002, very similar list, talking about the animals who are the most dangerous based on the number of human kills they get. Now humans themselves don't feature on this list in particular, which is why you see the mosquito running away with things over here. But of course, snakes remain really high up there, dogs remain really high, assassin bugs. Uh, this list chooses to include some animals that the other list left out, such as freshwater snails, tsetse flies, Ascarius roundworms, but there we see the crocodiles again, hippopotamuses, elephants, lions. We go lower and lower until we basically get down to just the 100 kills per year mark in some animals that actually a lot of us might consider to be quite benign, like deer and bees. And nowhere in these lists, or any other of the other lists that I found, do spiders appear. And we know there are potentially deadly spiders out there who have killed humans before. So where are these four killers? Why are they not showing up in these lists? Where are the kills? So let's look at some statistics, right? The first killer was Latrodectus, the widow spiders. Everyone knows the black widows. They're super toxic spiders. Well, let's dig into some of the stats here. Latrodectus heselti is commonly cited as the most venomous of the entire widow genus. It's the Australian redback spider. Well, the Australian redback spider last killed a person in the year 1955, which was a year before the antivenom was introduced. Now let that sink in. What is it right now? 2024? This was well over 50 years ago? That, 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 that's pretty crazy for the most toxic member of the spider genus. Well, check this out. There was actually a very large study done in the US where we analyzed confirmed bites from 2000 to 2008. 23,409 of them, uh, to be exact, and uh, none of them resulted in death. The famous Black Widow spider guys from the United States that everyone fears, people kill this thing because it's so deadly. 23,000 bites, not a single death. I did find a source stating that a 19-year-old woman did die in 2003 after acute myocarditis following a bite from Latrodectus tradecum guttatus. This is, of course, the Mediterranean Black Widow. The paper in the medical records stated this, this was the first time this, something like this had ever been observed. So, um, 
yeah, these spiders, like I said, they can kill people. It's not, it's not impossible. It has happened. But we really do need to put into perspective how rare these kills are. Now, widows, they were just one of the four killers, right? We've got more spiders to look at. What about the super toxic Australian funnel webs? Well, get this. There hasn't been any known kills from Atracid spiders, not since the introduction of the antivenom in 1981, other than one suspected case of a delayed reaction. Spiders have a total recorded 13, some sources say 14, kills, and uh, this is from 1927 to 1980. By the way, if you look up when the antivenom was uh, released or when the last kill from a funnel web happened in Australia, you will get three different numbers sprinkled through all of your sources. You'll get 1981, 1980, and 1979. Now, these are all right next to each other, which I guess kind of helps, but it makes it very tricky to figure out what happened. My guess, based on my understanding after reviewing everything, is that 1980 is when the antivenom was first developed, 1981 was when it was released to the public, and 1979 was the year that the last kill actually took place. But I can't actually find these kills in the medical record, so I just have to take scientists at their, words, at their word for it when they cite these kills. Anyway, I went with the median number of 1980. We look at the very first kill in 1927 to the last one in 1980, and uh, basically calculate, okay, 13 kills within that time span. This is 0 0.25 kills per year, which means these spiders are killing one person every four years. This is the Guinness Book of World Records holder for the most venomous spider in the world, Atrix robustus, the Sydney funnel web spider. One kill every four years, which is not even true anymore, not since 1980, because they don't kill people anymore. We have an antivenom. From 1991 to 2001, there was a fascinating, fascinating study run by Ibister and Gray. This study is so tremendous, it is probably the, more in, the most in-depth study of confirmed spider bites that we have up to date. I could make an entire video about the study itself. It's so cool. They archived 750 expertly confirmed spider bites which means that if someone says they were bitten by a spider, they could tell you exactly what spider it was. They can't count it. You have to have had the spider sent in to experts for identification, and that's the only way it gets into this list. So that means there's absolutely no BS happening here. Everything is exactly what um, would happen. There's no, there's no cases of misidentification. It's super, super solid science here. Now, only eight of the 750 confirmed spider bites were atracids, which I guess is pretty good because you wouldn't want to be bitten by them. Actually, only one of them, one of those cases developed um, serious envenomations, uh, a case of serious envenomation. One out of eight, which I guess is still, what, 12 and a half percent? Which is kind of a far cry considering how dangerous these spiders are really propped up to be. Well, what about Phonutria, the dangerous wandering spiders, the armed spiders from down in South and Central America? Actually, according to a spider scientist down there named Bucarecci, there's around 4,000 bites that occur from this genus in just Brazil every year. That's a lot of bites, 4,000 every year. Now, since 1903, there are 15 deaths attributed to Phonutria that appear in the medical records, but only two of those 15 were expertly confirmed. That doesn't mean only two of them were true bites, but it means that two of them could only two of them could be proved. But even if we do accept, yeah, all 15 of them were from Nutria, let's say for the sake of, uh, of um, an, an experiment, with 4,000 bites every year, counting from 1903, 15 deaths, that is a mortality rate of 0.003%. This is minuscule. Now, systemic symptoms appear almost exclusively in patients under 10 years of age or over 70 years of age as well. So in the medical literature with all of these bites, even the ones that don't end in death, because remember, people are scared of spiders, not just because they can die, but also because they can hurt, right? Uh, these systemic symptoms that we talk about with spiders where the symptoms get really, really bad, um, almost exclusively, you were really, really old or really, really young. And if you were somewhere in between, the symptoms just weren't that bad. One more chance here, the violin spiders, Loxosceles, the famous recluses. The closest uh, just about confirmed <laughs> case that I could find about these were a, was a case from 2011, causing a death in a three-year-old girl in Tennessee after she suffered from, a, from systemic Loxosceles. She died actually only 19 hours after the bite from Loxosceles reclusa. There is a 
a center for for um, pest control that cites that before this there was a death in 2004, which is also at this point not very recent and also kind of far apart from each other. Neither of these cases are considered expertly confirmed. However, they're still useful to take a look at. Uh, only two suspected, again, none expertly confirmed, cases of deaths from Loxosceles rufescens uh, exist. Um, Loxosceles rufescens is the violin spider you would have to look out for if you lived in Europe or parts of Asia. It was one death in Thailand in 2014 and one in Italy in 2016. The only ones that have ever been documented and, have, again, they were not expertly confirmed. They were probably Loxosceles spiders, but we can't say for certain. Now, this one's really interesting, because the out of all of the Loxosceles spiders in the world, it is cited that the South American ones have by far the most toxic venom. And there was a study done in Paraná, Brazil, of t over 20,000 Loxosceles bites from 1993 to 2000, so a seven-year period. And in that seven-year period, uh, we did actually count seven deaths. So, all right, this spider is dropping people. However, based on the number of bites, the deaths that resulted from them are still making up to a mortality rate of 0.03%. So, um, that is pretty bad. Now, one thing I do want to point out, because it's only fair about Luxosceles, is that this was our four, the member of our four killers that not only can it kill, but it its venom is cytotoxic. Which means that people aren't just afraid of dying, they're, they're afraid of systemic symptoms where their skin starts rotting. So I decided to look into the percentages of that occurring. And there was a study in the US in 1997 that looked at 111 confirmed bites from Luxosceles reclusa. Uh, no deaths occurred, big surprise. But necrosis did present in 37% of cases. Okay, so 37% is a pretty relevant number, that is pretty scary. Um, however, as we discussed in the last video, systemic, uh, or sorry, not systemic, ne necrotic effects do tend to heal within a month or two, and there's only a 10 to 15% chance of scarring. Now, systemic effects were observed in only 3% of cases. Remember, systemic effects means the really bad envenomation where you're basically hospitalized for a little bit. Um, there was a similar study run in Brazil where they confirmed 267 Luxosceles bites and then examined those, and necrosis actually developed in around 57% of those, so even higher, and systemic effects occurred in 13% of those cases, so systemic effects are way higher there. The fatality rate was 1.5%, so again, very small, and of course all deaths were from children under 14, which is a recurring pattern that occurs with not just one, but all of these spiders, is that young age or old age does tend to lead to more serious consequences following the envenomation of these spiders. Uh, one thing, last thing that I would like to point out is that in these studies, you are far more likely to participate if you actually required medical assistance from the spider. Right? Like, good old Uncle Joe that was, like, clipped by a brown recluse in his attic and then had pain for a few hours and then it went away probably wasn't reporting the findings to studies like this, right? So, I'm not saying, oh, these numbers don't matter. Of course they matter. They're, they're, they're real hard science, right? But um, I do want to put into perspective that some of the best case scenarios actually probably wouldn't have participated in studies like this, and therefore the numbers, as low as they are, should probably be even lower in terms of percentages of necrosis and systemic effects. So, our two questions. We had answered the first one. We have four really dangerous spiders. How do they rank among the world's most dangerous animals? Pfft, yeah, they, they're, they're not doing too hot. I mean, these guys, compared to so many other dangerous things out there, are just not cutting it. I mean, in the U.S. alone, let's take a look at this. Fatalities here, pulled from credible sources, around 43 deaths from lightning striking people every year, over 48,000 deaths by firearms, over 10,000 caused by car accidents just related to drunk driving. That, those are significant numbers, right? Even the lightning one, 43, yeah, maybe that's super duper low, but when we compare it to the seemingly super dangerous spiders here in the United States, Luxosceles reclusa, and of course the Black Widow, of which we have three, but they're practically indistinguishable from each other unless you're an arachnologist. These are Latrodectus variolus, Hesperus, and Mactans. Uh, yeah, between these two super dangerous spiders in the United States, they have a grand total of zero confirmed kills. There are zero expertly confirmed uh, spider bites that have led to deaths. Now, there are a number of reported deaths that were not expertly confirmed. Have these spiders killed anyone ever? I certainly think so. I think there, there's the deaths are far greater than zero, but they are so 
so low compared to the, some of the num numbers we just looked at that they're almost meaningless. But let's play devil's advocate for a bit because there is um, supporting evidence in medical literature that sometimes they people uh, doctors will write down, yeah, cause of death was this spider bite because these people came in and said so. I was bitten by a black widow. They came in, they got treated, they passed away. Okay, that's not expertly confirmed, which uh, is of very of utmost importance to spider scientists, right? Because we really want to make sure we have our facts straight. But it might be important for other people. I mean, let's just look at the other side. Because uh, here in this study by Forrester, done but from 2008 to 2015, we, they took averages of how many deaths were caused by certain animals. And venomous spiders did have deaths or kills attributed to them. And they came out to an average of six fatalities per year. Okay. Now, because they're not expertly confirmed, were all of them... All of those deaths caused by spider bites? We don't know. Uh, but this is just goes to show that even if we flip it and say, okay, we're just going to look at not just the best case scenario for spiders, but the worst case scenarios. Let's say that people, everyone who comes in complaining of a spider bite and dies, we'll just say, yep, that was a spider bite. That number is still kind of small. Six per year? I mean, how many people do you know that were struck by lightning? Lightning kills 43 per year. Right? So this, is th this number... It's just, no matter which way you slice it, it's so, so, so small. And that's really what I want to get across in this video, is how much should we fear spiders? Because spiders are feared a lot. I mean, they're really creepy looking, and people are scared of taking bites everywhere in the world. Can spider bites hurt you? Absolutely. Um, lots of things can hurt you, right? And lots of things can hurt you way worse and far more commonly than spider bites. Now, spiders are basically a constant. We have to deal with them here in the world. And so I want videos like this to serve as a little bit of a mental cushion. You know, it's it's not all death <laughs> out there. Um, spiders are really, really harmless for the most part when compared to so many other animals, even those that are very closely related to them, like that 3000 number on scorpions. In some ways, it's actually really fortunate that spiders are as harmless as they are. And even though that harmlessness isn't 100%, they can hurt you, and in some rare cases, they can kill you. No spider wants to bite you. No spider wants to attack you. And even when accidents do happen, you can rest assured that systemic effects and, God forbid, deaths are super duper rare. So just like with everything else in nature, spiders are not meant to be feared, but they are meant to be respected, right? And we want to give everyone their space. We want to understand what these beautiful creatures are, because they're a really important part of the ecosystem, and they're a part of the world that isn't going to go away. So <laughs> the easier we can learn to live with them, the better off we're going to be. Thank you guys so much for listening. I will catch you guys on the next episode. This has been Arachna Ryan, and I hope you learned something from this episode. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.